Hi, I'm Jay McClellan, and this is a Thor Sanctuary camper van that my wife and I just got. And it's, uh, it's new. I haven't done anything to it yet. It's basically just as it came from the factory. So I thought I'd show you a walk around uh, before I do any modifications to it. And now let's take a look. This model is a Sanctuary 19P. Uh, it is exactly the same as a Tranquility 19P, both by uh, Thor Motor Coach. The only difference between the Tranquility and the Sanctuary is the name. They give it two different names so they can sell it sort of exclusively to two different sets of dealers. This is based on a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter chassis. It's a 4x4 chassis with a, a short 144-inch wheelbase. And Thor Motor Coach basically buys those from Sprinter and then uh, tricks out the inside to turn it into a camper. On the front of the van up high, Thor added this LED light bar. And it's actually pretty nice. Um, it's uh, you know, certainly not the highest end or most powerful light bar out there, but uh, definitely provides a useful amount of light for driving off road uh, you know, and back trails at night if necessary. The solar panel in the center is 175 watts, which is not very big as solar panels go, but still it manages to take up a lot of the roof. Toward the back, you can see the big air conditioner, which to me seems really big, um, sticks up quite a bit, but uh, there it is. And uh, then to, on the driver's side, you can see the WineGuard signal booster and Wi-Fi hotspot. There are mounting rails up here that you could theoretically mount some kind of uh, bar system on to uh, support cargo, but they they attach them and then they goop them all up with sealant, so they're they're really not useful at all. And so, honestly, there's there's practically no useful storage up on top, and I don't plan to store anything up on the roof. That saves me the trouble of carrying a ladder with me. And on the passenger side is uh, the uh, the rollout awning. It comes with on the back, a uh, bike rack, and I've removed parts of the bike rack, the trays that hold the bikes. At the bottom rear on the passenger side, there is a propane outlet so that you can connect an external grill, that sort of thing. Coming around to the driver's side, we get to see most of the, um, the utility connections. In the upper left, there's a fresh water fill, and then the 30 amp uh, AC inlet, uh, cable TV antenna inlet, uh, an inlet for an external solar panel, uh, city water connection, so if you have pressurized water available, an external light. This is the door for the cassette toilet, so you can pull out the cassette to, uh, to dump that. And then uh, this is just an outlet for the hot water and heating system. And finally, a sewer hose storage hatch. And this door has a really crappy latch on it. I'm not happy about that at all. It, it just barely catches, and I think uh, it'd be very likely to vibrate loose. And, uh, yeah, and there goes the hose. So that's going to change. Underneath, on the driver's side, is this uh, gigantic dump valve for the gray water tank. This is just absurd. Uh, it hangs down, it sticks out, it's going to get hit by stuff if you do any off-roading at all. And it's a gray water tank. It doesn't have poop in it. All it has is water from washing hands, doing dishes, maybe taking a shower. But it's basically slightly soapy water. So one of my modifications will be to cut that off and put a much smaller valve on there and a much smaller fitting that isn't going to get hit and isn't going to hang down so low. The generator is mounted up underneath where the uh, spare wheel would have been, so you don't get a spare wheel with that down here. It's a 2500 watt generator, which isn't real big, and uh, but it's adequate to run the air conditioning or the microwave. On the passenger side, the van has the usual large sliding van door, so let's take a look inside. Here's the outside of the kitchen unit, and uh, it's kind of nice that you can stand at the sink and uh, look outside and kind of be outside while you're cooking. Uh, it's got this nice little fold-down table so you can uh, have a workspace in the outdoors um, under the awning that folds out on this side. And um, lots of little storage cubbies on here, so these are kind of nice. Under the table is a little storage compartment. I'm not really sure what you'd put in there. Uh, I guess something that doesn't fall over very easily. On the left, as you step in the door, uh, there's some controls down here. This is the solar charge controller 
for the 175 watt solar panel on the roof. And then above it is on off control for the 1000 watt inverter, uh, master battery switch, and then an outlet. Most of the internal controls are handled through this panel. It's a BM Pro control panel. Honestly, I'm kind of ambivalent about it. Uh, for a lot of things, I wish it just had a bunch of switches here instead of this uh, panel because it would be fewer things to go wrong. Uh, but it is kind of convenient. So, for example, I can uh, press the lights on button to turn uh, lights on, all the lights on at once. And then it has individual controls for different types of lights. And you can, uh, you can adjust brightness and so on. So here's the sink uh, looking from the inside. And it's got a removable top. That top rattles a lot, we found, as we drive down the road. It's really just the cutout from the solid surface countertop. And they, they set it back in there, but it's got a lot of slop in it. So that's something I'm probably going to change. Also, we found that this faucet, when you run water on it, out of it, uh, it runs, and then if you shut it off, you end up with water up to perhaps halfway, and maybe even a little more. And what happens is when you drive down the bumpy road, that water keeps dribbling out and making a mess on here. So we really can't drive with this top on top of the sink or we just have water all over. It's not a huge quantity, but it does kind of make a mess. In practice, we're going to have to drive with this removed just so we can catch that little dribble of water coming out. The two burner cooktop is basic but adequate. Uh, it doesn't have a built-in igniter, so you have to have your own uh, sparking device to light the burners, but otherwise should work fine for our needs. In front of the sink are these drawers. There are three drawers all the same size. Uh, one thing we found is that they have little magnetic hatches underneath, which is a good idea. It keeps them from coming open, except that the catches aren't really all that strong. And so going down a bumpy road, especially on the bottom, we found the bottom drawer actually came out while we were driving. So I'm going to need to improve that. Overhead there's an exhaust fan, and then uh, right behind the driver's seat is the microwave and the refrigerator. The microwave is fairly basic. In, uh, in some of the Thor literature I saw it referred to as a convection microwave. This is not. Uh, what we got is just a standard small microwave. So it's kind of tiny inside, uh, but not crazy tiny, and uh, certainly is usable. Unfortunately, you can't run this microwave on the inverter. I wish they had put a big enough inverter to run the microwave. The, uh, the 200 amp batteries are actually plenty big enough to run a microwave like this for a little while. We've done it many, many, many times in our truck camper that has the same size batteries, but with a 2000 watt inverter. Unfortunately, this has only a 1000 watt inverter, so the microwave only works when you have the generator on or connected to shore power. So the fridge is reasonably roomy uh, for, uh, you know, for a camper van fridge. Uh, it it is, is what it is as far as size goes, but I think it'll be plenty big enough for the two of us uh, for even up to a week-long trip. It's got a freezer big enough for uh, a quart of ice cream and maybe a quart and a half of ice cream and some ice cubes. So not, uh, not huge, but considering that it's a camper van, it's actually uh, fairly spacious. And the fridge is a compressor type, so it runs on 12 volt compressor only. That's a lot more efficient than the evaporation type refrigerators when running on, uh, on electricity. However, it doesn't work at all on propane, so you do have to have battery capacity in order to operate the refrigerator. It does have a special night mode that you can activate by pushing the, uh, the night mode button, and it slows down the compressor and uses less energy, and it's quite a bit quieter. It just won't keep up if the interior of the van is very warm. They say if it's over 86 degrees, then the refrigerator won't be able to keep up in night mode. Underneath the fridge is this access door, and uh, this gives you access to a, uh, a water filter, which is a really nice touch. Um, so it's got a 20-gallon freshwater tank, water pump, and then this uh, water filter uh, built right in. And, uh, and, I, and I like having that there. One thing I didn't like is that they didn't mount it very well at all. It wasn't screwed in very well at the top, uh, so it wasn't uh, firmly anchored. And it was whacking this uh, plywood behind it as we went down the road. It was rattling a lot. So I secured that at top and I put a piece of felt behind it so that it doesn't make noise. 
And this plywood really was only anchored at the top, and so it was flexing a lot back and forth and kind of squeaking. And so I just put a little L bracket down and on the right and secured it so it isn't moving. It was easy to fix. Uh, not a big deal, really, but I shouldn't have to fix that. That should have been done right at the factory. So I'm disappointed in the workmanship on that, but uh, it's not a huge disappointment, and uh, it's all fixed now, and it's ready for the road. The bathroom doors honestly are a bit of a disappointment in a couple of respects. Uh, for one thing, they're quite heavy. Uh, they have these weird, I guess, magazine racks at the bottom, and, and it's okay, but it does make it narrower, a narrower space to walk through past the sink with those sticking out. My biggest complaint about the bathroom doors is that they don't fit very well. Uh, actually, if I close the one on the left, the one on the right just comes down and it hits, and, and if I keep pushing, it really binds and doesn't fit well at all. I, When we bought this, or when we were about to buy this, I asked the dealer at General RV to fix that, and uh, as far as I can tell, they did absolutely nothing to fix that. I don't even think there is a way to fix that because of the way the doors are attached. So that's disappointing, and what's more disappointing is that uh, we find these doors uh, pop open when we're driving. They will not stay closed on their own. So overall, really the bathroom doors, I think, are a fail, but it doesn't matter that much to us because we're just going to take them off. We don't need bathroom doors. Uh, with just the two of us camping, usually we don't care, and the bathroom curtain is perfectly adequate for privacy. So if we, even if we have a guest in the camper, we can draw the curtain and it's, you can't see through it. It's perfectly adequate, and even for taking a shower, it's enough to keep the overspray off as long as you're not too exuberant. So in my mind, the bathroom doors don't really serve any purpose. They just get in the way, they're heavy, they pop open when driving, and they're going to come off. So here's the bathroom. Uh, as you can see, there are mirrors uh, on the medicine cabinet, and the cabinet is decent. It, um, it opens up, but there's no shelves inside. There's no really anything inside. And so I'm going to put some little organizers in here so that we can put stuff in because if you even set a small amount of stuff in here, it's just going to rattle around on the road. And it's really, it's, it's useless as is, but it's easy enough to put in your own organization and make it useful. Inside the bathroom, you get a couple of closet rods, so you can use it as a closet if you want. We probably will just take those right out and uh, not bother with hanging storage because it's not very useful as a bathroom when when those rods are in. The toilet is a cassette toilet, uh, so pretty conventional on top. This does rotate, which is kind of nice, so you can decide which direction you want to sit. And then you have a lever here to open the blade and close it. And then over to the right, there's a separate button that you push to uh, inject water into the toilet. Covered toilet paper holder. And then there's an air vent uh, for the heating system down here. And so you can uh, you can get some warm air in there uh, in cold weather. The shower is basic but effective. Uh, a couple of couple of handles leading up to a basic shower hose uh, with an on-off uh, valve at the top. The sink is unusual in that it folds down, and then the um, sink faucet folds out like that. Um, I haven't decided if I'm a fan or not. It does uh, does look functional, and then the water just kind of runs off the back, and then. There's a drain down there. So walking toward the rear of the coach, you see the table. There's seating uh, really comfortably for three. Uh, you could squeeze in four people back here sitting around the table and it wouldn't be too bad. One thing we really, really liked about the layout of this van is that sitting in back, you get a, uh, a fairly panoramic view looking in almost every direction. You can see outside through windows. So although it's kind of a small van, it's a small space, it really doesn't feel small. On each side and back, there are uh, sliding windows, and you just grip the grips on the bottom and slide it open. And there's also a sliding screen that sort of catches on the window. So if you catch it just right, you can open and close the screen as you slide the window. Uh, above each of the side windows, there's a roller blind, so you can quickly uh, quickly block those off. 
The rear windows don't have a built-in roller blind or other way to, to close them quickly, but they do have, it comes with some covers that will attach over each of the windows with Velcro, so it's easy enough to close those off for privacy. There are five overhead cabinet doors that flip up like this, and they're fairly generously sized. Uh, they do curve at the back because of the curvature of the van. When we first got the van, we drove down some bumpy roads and uh, we could hear a lot of rattling. These doors uh, basically rattle and whack against the, the surface behind them. And so one of the first uh, things I did as soon as we got home to quiet that down, I put in some simple felt bumpers, just uh, adhesive felt pads glued onto the doors at the right spot. And that makes them a lot quieter. The cabinets on the passenger side are slightly bigger, slightly wider than those on the driver's side. And then there's this third cabinet over the sink, which uh, is smaller because there's some uh, items in back. So in back we have a control for the heating, hot water and heating system, and an AC outlet. On the driver's side, above that uh, thing that looks like a bench but isn't, is this tall cabinet. And it's pretty roomy. There's, uh, there's quite a lot of space inside. It comes with two shelves, and then it has a little closet rod across the top. You can basically either use it for hanging clothes uh, with the shelves out or you put the shelves in and I would take the rod out. There's a 24 inch TV mounted back here and if you pull this chain you can release it and then it'll swing out on a uh, on a hinged bracket and so you can move it around back here to uh, to face really uh, almost any direction. It'll face uh, straight uh, to the passenger side or toward the rear. It's a basic 24-inch TV, nothing real special about it. It does have HDMI inputs and uh, some other inputs so you can connect a computer to it if you want, or a Roku uh, streaming stick would plug right into the back, but it doesn't come with any of that. It's just a TV and a monitor. So here's the massive sound system of the camper. Uh, it's not massive, it's tiny. It's, uh, it's a JBL flip USB speaker. That's it, there's no wired speakers in the camper itself. It's just this little flip speaker, which, you know, it's okay. I'm all right with that. Um, and it comes with this nice holder so that you can detach it and take it outside and take your tunes with you. So to make this into a bed, you have to remove the table and stow that. And then there's a switch to the right of the sink and under the cabinet. And I push that switch. It's motorized. The back part is motorized. And so it uh, slides down into its flat mode. And then the bench is or the, the things that look like benches to the sides pull up and flip down like that. And so there's the uh, there's the assembled bed. Overall it's about six feet square and uh, it has these fairly sizable gaps in it between the cushions but they're generally where your legs would typically go and then up toward the head area for the most part it's fairly flat. On the roof is an air conditioner and personally I don't recall ever using an air conditioner when I've been camping. Uh, I live in Michigan and I mostly camp in northern areas where it's just not all that warm, but certainly people in warmer areas of the country would find that very important. The downside is, uh, other than just having the weight and the, and the complexity, it sticks up pretty far on the roof and so that may tend to catch branches etc. Uh, but that's really the price you pay if you want air conditioning. So on the driver's side, down on the floor under this um, bench-like thing there are these two doors and that gives access to the combination water heater and space heater and this is the power center this drops down and then you can get to your AC breakers and uh, most of the DC fuses in the back of the van under the bench that uh, that converts to the bed there's a bit of storage it's it's not great, honestly. I mean, there's not a whole lot of storage, but there there are some useful storage cubbies. There's uh, a little shower outlet there, so you can have an external shower, and it comes with a hose for that. And then in this big compartment, there's uh, the 1,000 watt inverter, and then the controller board that controls all the lights and other things um, through that tablet up front. And then there's this main section, the storage section is kind of open, so that's usable. Uh, but you do have the seat belts down here, and you have to thread those up through the back bench if you want to use seat belts for people in the back. And then over on the right, there's another little storage section. The front cab is 
basically all stock Mercedes Sprinter van. Uh, there's nothing that, as far as I can tell, that Thor did custom in the front. It's all just the stock uh, van. And personally, I love it. Um, you know, it's a Mercedes-Benz. The seats are comfortable. It drives really nicely. Uh, it's easy to pilot down the road. I had you know, read stories of people saying it was tippy, and I didn't find it that way at all. We've taken it down some uneven roads and uh, have been really happy with the way it drives. Uh, it has adaptive cruise control, which I personally like a lot for longer trips. Uh, if you get behind someone going different speeds, it, it just keeps pace with them, and I like that. So uh, I won't say a whole lot about the front cab because it's all standard Mercedes Sprinter van. Well, that wraps up the tour. I uh, hope you enjoyed seeing the van as it is, and uh, we're certainly looking forward to camping in it and uh, also have a lot of interesting projects in mind to improve the storage and improve some of the systems on it, so I'll be showing you some of those in the future. Thanks for watching.